All right, welcome to our fourth installment of our NCAA D1 Softball Vault Series Roundtable. I am so excited this week um, to be in the presence of greatness um, with the Alabama Crimson Tide. We've got some amazing guests with us and we're gonna go dancing in the rain, I guess, again. I mean, because who doesn't love dancing in the rain? <laughs> so we're gonna start it off here. We'll introduce um, those that are on the call um, and we'll have a look here um, back at the 2012 championship game between uh, Alabama and the Oklahoma Sooners. So starting us off, um, we'll go with Kendall Dawson, yep. senior this year, correct? Exactly. Yes. So Kendall, all, C all SEC second team, uh, defensive team. You threw out 43 uh, runners in your career. Uh, I don't know if you knew that. And, uh, <laughs> drove in the winning run against Cal in the semifinals. Um, so talk to us a little bit about um, this final game and um, you can talk about um, your relationship with Jackie too as well. So thank you for being here as well. Thank you so much. And <laughs> of course, my dog gets a little rowdy as soon as it's my turn to talk. But um, just to catch up, I'm from Plant City, Florida, so I decided to go to Alabama, you know, um, good 10 hours away from my family, but I thought it was like the best decision I've ever made. Um, being a homebody myself, I got to meet a second family and um, my teammates and my coaches, it was the most amazing experience. Um, speaking directly about playing, I think I more so remember the relationships that we built because um, honestly, that's kind of the things that you, you take along with you. And um, definitely the things I remember the most are, are the relationships that we built with each other. And this game specifically was such a breakthrough because we had been so, so close in so many years prior to finally get to that point and kind of break through that wall. And like we said, the whole year finish it was simply the best time of my life. And you know, you get like choked up thinking about those moments as an older adult and like hearing your day to day working and you're like, man, I, if I could give anything to go back to that time, I would <laughs> probably. Um, but yeah, no, it was totally amazing. Jackie is an amazing person. I'm so lucky to have gotten to catch her as hard as that was. Um, definitely one of the coolest people uh, we know for sure. And she's got the most level head as a player. She was so fun to play with. Just anything that happened, it was just no sweat off her back and move on to the next pitch, which was one of the coolest qualities about her because I never had to worry too much about her personality as a catcher and, and maintaining that um, relationship between us. So that's basically, I think, all I got for you. Great. Uh, thanks, Kendall. We just watched Kehlani launch the yeah. <laughs> massive. Those are the moments you try to forget. <laughs> Who was saying that's the farthest ball they've ever seen hit? That was me. <laughs> yeah. uh, so next we'll go to Cassie Riley uh, Bosha. Uh, Cassie uh, hit 331 in your senior year. Uh, first base, uh, all SEC defensive team, 48 RBIs. Um, team high, 47 walks as well. So good eye at the plate. Um, welcome, Cassie. Um, tell us. Tell us what it was like to play for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Sure. First, thanks for having us. Uh, I was I got to tell people today that we get to you know I get to relive this this game with some of my my favorite people. So this is been looking forward to this all week. So thank you for having us. Um, you know it's it's Murphy says all the time tradition never graduates and uh, just stealing that line from him how cool it was to not just um, play for. Alabama softball but you know bro says it all the time we got to play for one of the coolest moments of the University of Alabama athletics period um, so that was that was always so special to look down and see the A uh, it was even more special to look across the field and see the people that we got to do it with um, so it's it's one of those things where I thought a game like this would be the most special thing that could have happened to us um, but it's really the relationships we've had since then that have been even better Thanks, Cassie. 
And last but not least, we've got Kayla Bro and Kayla, All-American, uh, 438 uh, career average, 471 your senior year, uh, and 90 hits and 38 stolen bases as well. So uh, pretty good at softball, I'd say. And an analyst now for ESPN. I get to hear your voice all the time. Love when you're calling games. Um, so welcome, Kayla. Uh, tell us what it meant to be um, a part of this uh, championship squad. Uh, yeah, this was incredible. I, I like Kendall and Cassie. I'm not from Alabama. I'm from Oregon. So I think all of us made a pretty conscious decision to go to a school that felt like a family. So I always think about that first and foremost is that this is my second family. And that is the case uh, was the case when Murphy got started with the program and it's the case to this day. So it's something that's really special. Um, being part of this championship team and getting to experience a ride where there's so many things that I look back on. It took so much to get to this point. You know, you see the championship game and that's one very, very small piece of a really long journey. And I think about the leadership that we had. So Kendall and Cassie were both part of like an incredible senior class with six players that all had um, very different and unique skills and different leadership styles that they brought to our team. So I think our chemistry on our championship team was unbelievable. We had a tight knit group. We all were on the same page. We knew what we want. And uh, I think what's really cool about this specifically, and I can tell you everybody on our team probably agrees. I think we were the less like quote unquote talented team. I think that um, we gutted it out because we were really, really together and we um, played together with a lot of heart. And you're going to see that later in this game. So I think that epitomizes Alabama softball and what it meant to play for this program. So when you say that you were a quote unquote less talented, team, <laughs> <laughs> is that because um, I had Alabama or Oklahoma had Kehlani in the circle? Oh, what's happening here? Who's that? <laughs> Those are <laughs> right away pregame festivities. Oh, wait. Let's a little about... eyebrow tweezing in. <laughs> Wait, so this is what happened in the rain delay. There was a dance party. Tell me about this dance party. Well, there, there's there's two rain delays. So there was a three-hour, like, pregame rain delay. So that's what you see of them inside the, uh, like, whatever, our waiting, waiting room or whatever. Um, was trying to stay loose because we were just, like, playing the waiting game of when were we going to get the opportunity to get on the field. And then there's a second rain delay that actually takes place in the game, and that's when, like, all the dance in the rain stuff happens. So... Uh, yeah, two very big rain delays in this game. <laughs> now, in watching the game, when watching it back, you all just kind of embraced it. Like, it was kind of like, you know what? Yeah, it's raining. We're going to play softball. We're, we're good. There, even in your faces and, and, and looking at your entire squad, your entire dugout, it was just almost like this carefree kind of really loose type of play. Where do you think that came from? Was it Coach uh, Murphy? Was it um, Jackie? Where did that loose kind of way that you played softball come from? <laughs> I see Mike's mute, so I guess that's on me. Um, <laughs> I guess you better answer this, Kendall. Oh, gosh, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. But I can tell you that I haven't grown out of that stage of my life, but I'm, I'm still a good bit goofy. And Jackie and I were extremely goofy all the time together. Um, I actually remember before, actually before one of our, our games versus Arkansas that season, that Jackie and I were on another level of goofiness before the game, and we didn't do very well in the game. So Murph had to had to talk to us about that one in the dugout, but um, and specifically called she and I out. But you know, honestly, it's I, I was at the point in my career where I was like you know, we're going to either have fun doing this or we're going to put too much pressure on ourselves. And Murph has actually said to me when I first came on, I think in my sophomore year, um, he, he asked me if I knew the difference between being too silly and not. And I honestly told him, you know, blank stare. I wasn't sure. So um, it was kind of a common theme for us to be a little bit rowdy. And I think I really appreciated that, of course, um, as myself, a rowdy person. And Cassie, what is your favorite story of Kendall that you can share with us? Like, give me your 
favorite memory of Kendall or Jackie being goofy, whether it's off the field, on the field. Give me your best story. My best story that is allowed to be uh, shared with everyone, right? Because they're categorical. <laughs> So shoot, I mean, Kendall was my roommate, so I, I have for for three years. So there's probably a ton of stories. Um, I, I'll tell you what, it's it's so cool that the two of them were always the focus on the field, right? So if you uh, there was never you were never able to hit the panic button because you had the two people you had on the the field. Um, and, and just something worth mentioning, we had some really bad losses those first three years. We lost on a walk-off home run our freshman year, a walk-off home run our sophomore year. And then everyone always said, well, at least you didn't get run rolled. And then our junior year, we got run rolled two games in a row. <laughs> so, so we, and it, it, it was, it was one of those scenarios where things would happen and we'd say, oh, here we go again. And it never happened with Kendall and Jackie. And I really think the reason why none of us on the field said, here we go again, is because they never said it. And I thought that was, that was huge. Um, a goofy, I don't, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of like a goofy story. I mean, the fact that you guys were tweezing each other's eyebrows in the locker room before a game, or it just, it was such a unique relationship. Um, and I'm so not a goofy person. So it's, it's funny that you even asked me what my favorite, my, my, when you thought my favorite memory of Kendall was when we would do the pickoff play and we would just kind of make eye contact and I'd get excited that we were doing a pickoff and I had to try to not show how excited I was. That, we're, that was, that's probably the extent of like my favorite memories from the field. <laughs> uh, about you, Kayla, do you have a favorite memory of Kendall or anybody that was kind of like the jokesters on the team or or favorite memory on the road in the airplane on the bus like what is your favorite like best moment that you can remember and share with us yeah no, well, I, I do remember um Kendall and Jackie before like I went up to him like I think it was before like our one of our championship series games I'm, I'm not sure which one and like there was like this tarp that had been filled with water at like the practice field and they were like playing with it and I'm like guys we're about to go on the field in, like 20 minutes and they're like playing with this puddle of water <laughs> like that was like how it was like there was just moments where like again you fully trusted them like they needed to stay loose Jackie needed to stay loose and relax before the game and you 100% knew that once you got on the field they were going to be fine and ready to go like I never had any doubt that Jackie wasn't going to come ready or Kendall wasn't going to come ready but they always kept it loose like they had to that was how they worked and I think with Kendall like Kendall knew that too so like you know all these like serious like in huddle like where you go out and like okay I'm gonna go talk to the pitcher we're gonna talk about the game plan like no that did not happen like in certain situations because Kendall knew like hey Jackie needs to laugh right now Jackie needs to be having fun it needs to not be about the strike zone right now it needs to be about like enjoying the moment so I think Kendall did a really good job on that and uh Kendall like sat behind me on the bus so her and I she'd like pick on me all the time because like <laughs> I was like I mean I'm mean, even ever since I was a freshman she would just she knew how to like get me riled up. I was like shy when I first got to campus and yeah, they made sure that wasn't the case when I left. We were gonna allow that, Kayla. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna flip it. Kendall, what's your favorite moment um, that you shared with Cassie? Because you guys were roommates, right? Yeah, we had a lot. <laughs> I have to say, I probably bothered the crap out of Cassie. I cannot, um, I can't, I can't back down from that, but definitely, um, I think the coolest moments we had together was, um, you know, Cassie is from New York, so she has this big, beautiful Italian family, and they would all come down, and basically, we'd all be, like, seven or eight of us in our little, tiny, two-bedroom apartment, just having the times of our lives with these huge pieces of pizza <laughs> that her mom would literally either air fly down to us, or she'd come, and she'd just cook these amazing Italian meals, so I think that is the coolest part about living with Cassie obviously um other than the fact that she kept me on track because I obviously have a tendency to get off track if, if you're thinking about my goofy nature um so we worked really well together in my opinion I mean that was the best setup and unintentionally I know Murph didn't suggest that but if he could have I'm sure he would have <laughs> speaking of Murph um what's it like to play under Patrick Murphy to play um at Rhodes Stadium. I know your fans are historically absolutely insane. One of them is one of my good friends. Um, 
And so what was it like? like talk to me about um, Patrick Murphy. Like, how is he as a coach? Uh, let's start with you, Kayla. Uh, yeah, uh, Murphy is uh, special. And uh, that's pretty obvious from the time you're getting recruited because um, he's like – kind of like a dad to some degree he loves you and cares about you he gives you a giant hug when you're being recruited and sometimes when you're being recruited that's not always the case but really and truly that's always the the case with Murph I think he has this unbelievable like pulse for people's um, personalities he understands like the good qualities and characteristics he can pick that up really quickly with people so uh, he's a good manager he understands like the pulse of the team he understands what pieces need to go together momentum wise personality wise talent wise to like structure a really really good team and I think you know the, the biggest part for me is he's good at all that stuff. But the one thing that I never really doubted was that he likes me and loves me as a person beyond what I did on the softball field. So I knew if I made a mistake at practice, like it kind of shocked me, honestly, the first few times, like he would, you know, ring you at practice. And then you'd go into the clubhouse and he'd be like, hey, bro, did you watch that baseball game last night? And you're like, wait, time out. What just happened? And he's like goofing around and playing with you and and treating you like nothing happened at practice. And so I think that's something really special is he finds a way to um, make you know that you're loved no matter what. And Cassie, what was it like for you playing under uh, Coach Murphy? Yeah, it's, um, it was one of those things where I actually, I remember I first got an email from Alabama and I was so afraid of being homesick that I was for sure, I wasn't going any further than two or three hours away from home. And I, I, I remember someone being like, you're crazy if you don't at least go down there and see how you feel. And I realized I was like, wow, he's made such a family here. And even, um, even I remember, you know, my stepdad giving him a call and just saying like, Hey, um, help me, help me be re- reassured that she's going to be okay down there. And he said, I'll, I, I will never let anything happen to any of my players. And, uh, you know, it's not, that's not a selling point. And it's, he really is going to care about you, not what you do for him. It's, he really does care about you. And I think he can, um, he, you know, certain coaches have specialties where some coaches can see like the fine tune a swing or fine tune a pitching motion or whatever it may be. And his is, I think, understanding when someone feels a little off or understanding when the team is a little out of line and he knows exactly how to just get it in line. Cause I think he realizes how special that is. And, uh, Gosh, the fact that he picked who he picked and talk about it not being all about talent. We had such a mixed bag of people. It wasn't just like, here are the top 50. I'm going to go with that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I was in the middle of nowhere, New York, that the fact that he was like, yeah, come on. I was, that, that's insane. You know, so he really, uh, he did a good job. He still does a very good job. And Kendall, what was it like for you playing for, uh, for Murphy? Yeah, I don't think I could have said that any better than what Bro and, and Cassie already said, other than the fact of sometimes you look at a team and you say, okay, that coach obviously has like a prototype player. They're all very similar. And, and to ditto on, you know, or build on what Cassie just said, it's like who you are as a per- person is just as important at, when you're being recruited as who you are as a player. So when you get all that, and you build it all together and you base that as your number one ground uh, ground rule for, for recruiting kids in, you know you're going to have a successful team because they're going to work super hard for you. That They have the belief in you. They have the belief in the team. And everybody around them is just going to build them up constantly. And that's totally how I feel from uh, playing for Murph. So we're going to go on to, because we talked about this the first half of the game, um, is not the most exciting on the Alabama side. So we're going to go just straight to talk about Rhodes Stadium. I've never been able to actually visit Rhodes Stadium. Um, Tell me what it was like, the difference between playing there uh, and then we'll get over to playing uh, at Hall of Fame Stadium uh, in OKC. So, um, Cassie, what was it like to play at Rhodes Stadium? You know, I was I was thinking about I was trying to describe it to a player the other day. Um, when you have that educated and that passionate of a fan base, um, it really you you almost are like, oh, stadiums don't actually shake. You don't actually feel that, but oh my, do you feel it? And I remember even my um, I don't know if you've ever been to a concert, but if you've ever been to a concert that's so loud, you go to yell or say something, and you can't even feel your vocal cords vibrate. I remember being in a moment my freshman year even, which was four years prior to this, and yelling, getting excited. And because the crowd had gotten so loud, I couldn't feel my vocal cords. And I remember that bugged me out. I was like, oh, my. 
and I was on the receiving end. How great is that? Right. And I couldn't imagine, I was like, thank goodness. I am not that opposing team. You know, that was my first thought. And so, um, yeah, it is, it is certainly electrifying. And, and of course, led by Emily, Emily Pitek. It's, that is so special having her at the front of uh, that cheering section. Yeah, and we tried to get Emily on the call today. Um, she's got this famous overalls. And who was she voted? Um, what was she voted for ESPN? Top fan? Yes. Fan of the year, I think. Fan of the year. Uh, Inaugural one? Hall of Fans class. Yeah, Hall of Fans. Good call. Hall of yeah. Fans. Yes, that's what it is. Um, Even better. Get her on here today, but um, she's spending time with her family. Um, I'm sure we can get um, some comments from her because she is super fan and so now we've gone through road stadium super loud hard to play there you've got you know emily and overalls you've got people yelling screaming and then you get here to oklahoma city and you've got a pretty much oklahoma crowd but the entire stadium is ou that's just like that's honestly how it is and so you go from Rose and then you get to Hall of Fame Stadium and you're playing Oklahoma. What was it like? What was, tell me about the first time you actually stepped on the field um, at Hall of Fame Stadium. Uh, Kayla, like, what was it like? Do you remember the first time you walked up to the field? What were, what were your thoughts? What were you feeling uh, in that moment? Yeah, uh, I think I kind of had like a, a little bit of a full circle moment. Um, I actually got to play on Hall of Fame Stadium field when I was like growing up at Travel Ball. I played a tournament there and, uh, you know, the stadium when you go in a summer ball tournament is like it's bare. It's, there's nobody there and it's like not like manicured perfectly. And um, I remember playing there and I was kind of like, oh, this is it like it feels big because the stadium's big behind you, but it felt like super quiet and just like bear because again there's nothing there nothing's going on um and then when I went as a sophomore you just you walk up and everything is perfect and like the blue and the red stands and it just pops and you just feel like you're in a place where historically something magical has happened like it totally changes your perspective and then when you get fans in there it's like I just wanted to take mental pictures all the time I just like took snapshots in my head of like how it felt to stand there and um I spe specifically remember and um doing that um, during the champ series when we were doing the national anthem. And I remember just standing there and looking out and being like, wow, this is a special moment. I'll never forget it. Like I took a moment, took a deep breath and like just stared out at the field and was like, this is magical for sure. And Kendall, you're behind the plate. You're close to the fans. You've got that crazy weird net that the ball goes up <laughs> and everyone goes, Woo! <laughs> what was it like? What was your experience like? Cause you're closest to all those OU fans. Um, and you know, I've been to the World Series a few times, and they can get a little bit rowdy sometimes. Um, what was it like for you being so close to them um, behind the plate? Yeah, exactly. And to reiterate on what you said earlier, you know, when it rained so hard and it got so late that this game kind of got pushed back. By that time, you know, the general, you know, Joe Blow just watching the game had kind of left. So like you mentioned, it was literally, you know, a sea of that crimson um, not only for our fans, but just the OU side. And honestly, um, getting to play behind that is really exciting to me. I think that um, obviously if you have that much love for the sport, then that's the place you, you, you dream of being as a kid. Um, so thankfully I was able to kind of, when I was playing, not, not hear the noise in the background and put that all to the side and kind of listen to the team. And it's kind of amazing that the stadium is so big, you can kind of drown it out a little bit better than you could at the Rhodes Stadium because in Rhodes, it feels like everybody's right on your back and you can hear every word they're kind of saying. Whereas when you get into a stadium that big, it's kind of like everything's a blur. So I think that was a little bit of an advantage of <laughs> that aspect of being kind of overwhelmed in the opponent's fan base. And Cassie, for you, what was it like when the first time you kind of stepped on the dirt? Because I, the dirt feels different there for some reason. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the grounds crew, but what was it like when you took your first step onto the field? Uh, so my first time there was three years prior to this uh, as a freshman, and I had um, I I had felt pretty confident that I was like, okay, this is just like any other game. This is just you know, and I almost uh, I did probably what I wasn't supposed to. And I kind of just ignored the magnitude of what it meant, and I remember. I remember hearing 
the dirt under my under the the spike right because it it does you're right it does sound different i think every field it just i don't know it just is it was one of those things where i got rushed with like every memory of sitting in front of the tv and watching it when you're growing up and thinking like holy cow how many people have actually been able to play on this field it and it is it it can it can certainly overwhelm you um and I think it is, like Kayla said, very important to take advantage of and take a snapshot of those moments. But at the same time, you're also like, wait a second, we have a job to do. And we're not, you know, Kayla was recently on a podcast where he, she spoke about how your first time you're kind of like in awe of it. And then the second time you're like, okay, yes, this is awesome. However, <laughs> we have a job to do now. Like we're, it's, it's time for business. You know, you're not as probably overwhelmed by the magnitude of it. And so we're, we're now getting into like the bottom of the third inning. We've had the offense hasn't been spectacular. Um, but Kehlani, I really want to talk kind of about your approach um, against Kehlani. Is this right kind of before it starts getting really wet, and rainy? Um, she, she's, she's throwing the ball pretty hard down in the zone. What, were, what was your game plan? against Ricketts um, when you were stepping up the plate. I think it was Kendall that, that had, had a great game plan against. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think I mentioned earlier, I was like, hit or get hit. You know, if she throws that hard in pitch, I'm, I was going to wear that thing all day. You know, you work your whole life for that. Um, I was like, if she breaks my leg, I care less, you know. Um, so we were looking for that hard and out pitch because we had watched so much film and we had such a great team. Um, of individuals putting together just short clips of this is this pitch versus this pitch. And uh, I think that really helped make a difference because we could see, okay, majority of the time that change up is going to be low. Majority of the time, what they call the crop duster is going to be out of the zone. I don't want to swing at that. And then we saw, you know, pretty consistently she was hitting that hard out outside pitch over the plate more than any other pitch. Um, so for me as a righty, I was like, okay, perfect, huge advantage. I, I'm only going to look for one thing. She did fool me on the change up a couple of times, but um, for the most part, we were getting all over the plate, trying to let, a, let her feel a little bit uncomfortable by taking away that crop duster and then going for that hard now pitch. And the lefties, what's, what was happening on that left side, uh, on that lefty, lefty matchup? Because that thing does do this, like just drops off the table as you're running at it. Which yeah, I don't know about you, Cassie, but as a lefty, I think without a doubt, Kehlani was like the best pitcher I've ever faced in my life. Uh, she was filthy. And uh, I think, you know, in terms of our game plan, I think I struck out on the first at bat every single game, which I didn't do a lot. So like, that was pretty rare, like three days in a row, you strike out on the first at bat, you, <laughs> um, you, you feel bad about yourself. But the, I think well, the first and foremost goal was, you know, you're going to strike out at some point in the game. So if it's early, then you try and find a way to make adjustments to pick a different pitch to challenge Kaylani and try and make her feel as uncomfortable as possible. So, you know, without a doubt, we crowded the plate, we moved up in the box, we kept moving around, we showed bunt sometimes, we try just to do something different so the zone looked different to her every time or when she did get in a situation where she did hit a lot of batters in game two was you know how can we force her to throw us something different so I wanted her to throw me the change up because I, I knew that was a pitch that I could handle um, whether it was a bunt or a slap or something like that so again just trying to find ways to make her do something different. And something too that we it wasn't as physical I guess but because she was so difficult because she was getting us out so much I don't know if you guys remember how we celebrated every single tiny win if we took a pitch if we barely tipped a ball we were going nuts and even locks infield hit we were we like you know our our volunteer system couldn't keep us in the dugout because we were absolutely out of our mind like and I, you have to do that because if not, you're going to, A, miss, you know, we knew it was our last game to ever celebrate, right? And then B, it's going to start to wear and you're like, oh, another person just struck out. Oh, another, you know what I mean? She was that good. Uh, we had to get really, really good at, at, at the tiny little celebrations. Cassie, it's so funny that you just said that because I heard our crowd when Lock just got that hit. And I was like, oh, wow, they were loud for a second. It was like the loudest the camera's been. It was our first hit in, in, in a long time. I wanted yeah. to say she broke up the no-no. Broke up the no-no. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of noise, didn't you all get a warning for being too loud in the dugout from the umpires? That what happened all game? year long. Every game. <laughs> Every single game. That was Tell me about different. this. Like, how, when did it start? Do you guys remember? Uh, I think it started at Ole Miss. Um, Ole Miss as well. But do yeah. you remember what it was right after? 
the tornado. The tornado. Yeah. We were all super tight. And I remember Whitney and Kima started dancing and banging around and we finally loosened up. And we did it. Yeah, we did it for two years. We call it like Beats by Bama. So you'd grab like balls and you'd bang balls on the like the benches in the dugout or we would make up like, I don't know, I remember Kendall like moving her cleats on the ground and making noises like. Uh. Yeah, but I, I remember it was such a cool thing because it helped everyone like buy into the game. Like whether you're sitting the bench, whether you're in the game where you were going to get a pitch hit situation, like your buy-in was incredible because of that. The goal was to be so loud that the other team has to, you know, send us a warning. So that was so cool. Um, just to also show how close knit of a team we were, that they were psycho when any one of us did anything amazing. So it started, you were in a tornado in Old Miss? Uh, the tornado, there was a tornado that went through Tuscaloosa um, my sophomore year, their junior year, so a year before this. Um, and we had a series that weekend and it got canceled because it destroyed a, a lot of the town of Tuscaloosa, a big, big portion of it. Um, it didn't actually hit the university, but it went like, what, like two or three blocks over from right the university, there. super yeah. close. Um, so it was one of those things where it kind of had a, know personal impact on us uh there's a lot of people that were affected that we knew and um and then the week after because we we basically missed our last sec series that year regular season series and then we went to the tournament which was oh we went to Ole Miss and then we went to the tournament yep. Yep. you're right yeah it was Kentucky. Um, yeah and we won the sec the regular season sec um that that weekend after we basically had a weekend off we got to go home or do whatever um, because it's tornado and it was just like you needed something positive and happy and that's what started it yep so be beats by bama is what it's called mm -hmm. beats by bama they should put out an album <laughs> we're on a music video <laughs> she had the duck out the duck out album that would be amazing the lefties off of kaylani no she, it's difficult to get a hit off of kaylani in general but it looks like the lefty slappers was was your goal to kind of put pressure on that defense um, if you could, hit, you know, hit, touch the ball? Because we're starting to put the ball in play, uh, small ball, and um, just had a bunt base hit. Oh, and here comes the win. So talk to me about that small ball, Kayla. Yeah, I think, again, it was just trying to find a way to put it in play. With her spin, you could see a lot of the balls that were hit in general are kind of like ricocheting. So they're either, they're, they're either having a big hop or you can tell they're miss hits a little bit. So for us, it was – kind of like chipping away at her, putting it in play first and foremost, trying to find ways to make contact. And then like Cassie said, just building off of that excitement and trying to wear her down like physically as much as mentally by just being so excited to put the ball in play. Like technically those are victories for her if we're missing the ball a lot, but we wanted them to feel like they were losses or big time losses for her. Cause we weren't, I, I mean, really until late in the game, we didn't make any really quality contact. And even in game two that we won, um, we really hit their number two pitcher harder than we hit. Kaylani. So, I mean, we really didn't have that many really hard hits off of her. So it's starting to rain pretty heavily at this point. You guys, I think this is what, a 13 minute rain delay right now? Not yet, because Alabama is on the field actually. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Look at how hard it's raining. It doesn't rain any harder in the bottom you. of the fourth. <laughs> It is the same rain at the top of the board. <laughs> you see that perfect pitch <laughs> in the rain? <laughs> well, shoot, hang on. Wait, this is, Jackie has a little bit of a tough time here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she gets out of it, but she's got a little bit of a tough time. <laughs> so this is like, it's starting to rain right now. Yep. It's starting to rain pretty good. It, it, it's coming down. They just showed, showed the light up there. Um, what Kendall talk to me about like what were you thinking behind the plate were you thinking hey are we gonna play this thing or like are they no not at all yeah it's uh, I mean and so funny because an Alabama tradition for the football team is wet ball Wednesday so every Wednesday they throw the sprinklers on and make the guys practice in the rain so no doubt uh we had kind of similar situations um if it was raining at practice Murph was like it's gonna rain in the game you're gonna practice kind of thing um and even if the team was hitting, a lot of times we'd be running in the rain as pitchers and catchers, uh, whatever the case may be, as long as it wasn't lightning. So um, I don't think at this point, I don't recall ever thinking it's raining too hard to play because um, Jackie's handling herself and I never felt, felt like she got too uncomfortable. Of course, there were setbacks because they're a really good team and really good hitters. So um, I never once thought, you know, they're going to call the game 
And honestly, I was one of the most ticked off people when they did say um, it's time for a rain delay. So if you can see, I think I was on base and I, I remember walking up like a toddler to Murph being like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing my helmet off, like what is going on? <laughs> and Kayla in the outfield. So you're out in, where you left? You're in yeah. left. Yep, I'm in left, <laughs> yeah. somewhere out there. You're out there somewhere. You're out in the outfield. Really goes to the warning track probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It gets pretty wet out there. The grass gets, I mean, it gets pretty slippery. Um, and when those balls are hit super hard and it skips off the grass, like, that's no, that's no fun. Well, in the outfield, were you thinking, oh, it's just, you know, we're good out here. Were, was there ever a doubt that, that you were going to stop play or, or the same thing? Like, oh, no, we're just going to play through this. Like, no, good. I wanted to play through it. Um, you know, it's like one of those things where, uh, you could kind of tell, like, again, it's not yet, but you could tell, like, really quickly that Jackie was handling this weather better than Kaylani was. And again, that's not a disrespect to Kaylani. It's just how it was. Jackie was doing not that much better because she's still a little wild, walked a batter here, like, whatever it is, but better enough. So, like, I was sitting out there and I was like, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Like, we cannot, like, pause this game. And um, I think, you know, the other thing that, uh, you're going to see at the end of this game is that their outfielders make errant throws. Their infielders make errant throws. Like by putting pressure on the defense in this situation, it really worked out into our favor because we wouldn't have scored as many runs as we did if it weren't for some errant throws. Um, and again, credit to Jackie because I don't remember that many balls like hit and play that hard to the outfield at this point from here on out uh, that we weren't able to handle that weren't like in the air. I don't remember getting, I don't even know if I got a ball this game. Um, I don't remember getting a ball on the ground in the outfield and I never had to make a throw in this situation. But once again, that's a credit to the, to the bullpen right there. Or the, or the battery. Why did I say bullpen battery? Yeah, we know what you meant. You're out there. Picture sketchers. Cassie, for you, I mean, you're right next to, you're, are you on the side of the OU dugout, right? Mm -hmm. You pretty much hear what's going on. And at this point, OU's up 3-0, you know? They're kind of thinking, uh, we've, got a, we've, we've got this kind of in the bag, at, maybe. I don't know, maybe not. But you're right by their dugout. What, do you remember what it was like, the vibe in their dugout um, during kind of like this inning? Because they're still up 3-0. Yeah, you know, it's funny because it does switch, but it doesn't switch yet. I, I wrote about this because it was it was so um, the dichotomy of, of their energy was so like uh, present. I felt like, you know, it was at first I wanted to try to be the I loved being next to their dugout because I wanted to be like the voice barrier to Jackie. I wanted to be like pacing up and down and being like, all right, you might not need a voice right now, but I'm going to try to be a voice so you don't hear them. <laughs> um, but it, you know, for sure. I mean, I, I, I was never thinking like, okay, hey, you know, we're only three innings away. We have to score some runs. I don't think any of us were ever thinking that, but it was very obvious. They hit a couple of home runs at the beginning of the game, how loud that hit my eardrum versus a home run they hit later in the game, or it, it just, it was very different. And I, that was so obvious to me. And I, I remember thinking they're beat. They already thought they lost where they thought they were going to win at this point. Um, so yeah, it's interesting you picked up on that because it, it really does switch after this inning. Getting that lead runner. And so Conley makes a nice play at third. Like you, you, it just never looks like you guys aren't nervous out there. You're, you're making your plays. You, you kind of like just getting the job done. Three zeros, you know, a sizable lead. But in this next half inning, when it, it starts to rain a little bit more, talk to me about um, the collective – kind of way the, the team was feeling, like, as a team. Like, you're sitting there, you're down 3-0. What was it about this, you know, top of the inning when you get into this bottom of four? Do you remember the huddle? Like, when, when you go in, was there, like, a switch that, that flipped? Because the game's about to change just about right now. Was there, like, a, a switch that you all just flipped? Or was it just like, eh, it, it's just a national championship game. No big deal. Uh, I personally think that the the switch starts in the previous inning when Amanda Lock gets the ground like the base hit. Like you just you're you're always looking as a player for things that are going to turn any kind of momentum. And like that was the start of it. We got two base hits that inning. It was like okay, we're getting somewhere. We're building, and we got time. And I think something else that um, is always kind of 
in the back of our head is that we had never lost a series all year. So if we played somebody, we, 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 we won the series, whether it was like a two game series, we didn't split with anybody. Like if it, we played somebody twice, we beat them twice. If we played them best two out of three. We won two out of three at least. So um, we did a good job of managing understanding that we got to win every weekend or win every series. So that was something too, that uh, I, I never think I never thought we were already down and we were out of it. I think it was just a matter of time and we just needed a little bit more time, a little bit more time, a little bit more time. And Jackie, she was uh, 41 and three this year. Like that was her record. So not bad. No. <laughs> Talk to me, okay. uh, Kendall, maybe you can talk to me about her relationship with your pitching coach, Stephanie, because I actually played against yeah. Stephanie um, yeah. in the day. Uh, fierce competitor, fierce, um, super stoic on the mound. Oh, yeah. Just always competing, like, every, every pitch. I remember playing against her, um, actually, at the College World Series. And so talk to me about how she manages uh, the pitching staff and, and how you guys work together. Uh, to get, I mean, to get 41 win wins. Yeah, and this is actually Steph's first year with us. So talk about a big change because she not only did she implement that fierce competitiveness to our pitching staff, but also she kind of changed around a lot of the things we did. We swam a lot more. We ran a lot more. We could maintain for a lot longer. Um, but on top of that, I think like she made the perfect fit between Jackie and I because like me as a total opposite personality type until it hits game time. Um, I definitely needed that motivation from her. And not only that fact, but I definitely looked up to her as a player, you know, someone who played at your school, someone who lived this and, and wanted it just as much as you wanted it right now, um, I think made a total a huge difference. And I think that's how we got Alexis Osorio to even commit to Alabama. I remember standing up in front of her family, who was, you know, a pitcher after Jackie, but and saying, like, who else would you want to play for than someone who has literally lived this whole entire life and has done everything that, you you know, you could imagine here in Alabama. So she is an amazing aspect to the team. I think she made a huge difference, a huge impact right away. And I can't say enough great things about her. I called her mom all season, and I probably bothered the crap out of her all the time. But she was literally down to teach you anything, show you anything, and help you improve. She's amazing. So it's starting to rain fairly hard now, right? Same amount? You guys think it's the same amount? Amount. <laughs> I'm telling you. TV made it look way worse. Yeah. TV, TV did make it way really worse because at some point, like, I remember standing out there and, like, it's like a, it's a drizzle. Like, it's a yeah. light rain. And you're like, okay, come on. I can stand out here. It's going to be okay. It was literally <laughs> not raining that hard. The no. proof of it is when you watch someone slide into home at the, in the fourth inning and dust comes up. There's no way it's raining that hard if dust is still able to come up. <laughs> now, all these holding an umbrella for Patty. I mean, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure it doesn't, I mean, I don't know the rain, like meteorology in Oklahoma. So I'm sure this is like maybe a lot of rain to them, but from Florida, I mean, that was like literally a light drizzle to me. Um, and in Alabama the same, but I don't know. It kind of rains in Oregon too. <laughs> yeah, not, not a whole lot. Billy, you know what it's like to rain. Yeah. rain, it rain. Like, well, I think I went to Alabama. <laughs> Yeah. Get me out of the ring. <laughs> so, uh, Oklahoma, they scored on a home run by Ricketts, home run by Lauren Chamberlain. She was a freshman this this year. Um, what was it like playing against Lauren as a freshman? She fierce, like, when she had 30, 30 home runs her freshman year. Um, talk to me about what it was like to play against um, her in her freshman year. And I could talk too. I mean, I watched a lot of film on her, obviously, but I, I watched a lot of film on all of them before the series. And it was just like, you know, when someone's just a raw talent, raw, very strong person, she obviously has a great eye for any pitch. If you saw some of the series after this, this season, you could see her hit, you know, a home run, a ball two inches off the ground. I and mean, that's just amazing raw talent, uh, amazing eye hand-eye coordination so it was really cool to get to play against her her freshman year and uh, she had a lot of series against Alabama so that wasn't the end of us seeing her um, I know a lot of the teams after us got to face her a lot and just really cool to compete against someone like that yeah and she still holds the home run record um, right now I mean we've got Jesse Harper chasing it um, but you know going back and watching these games you're right she just kind of hits stuff like all over the place. Like she's a great hitter. The ball could be in the dirt and she can pretty pretty much hit it out. 
Um, Cassie, do you, were, were you going to add to that? All I was, was going to say is I felt like the, the best I potentially ever felt, like a glimpse of it, whenever I got to, and whenever I watched her play, even the rest of her career, I just felt like she, she looked what I thought my best was all the time. <laughs> like, she never, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, wow. Like, <laughs> I, I just, it, it was just so impressive. Usually people go on hot streaks and she did it her entire career, which is incredible, right? Mm-hmm. No, I, I, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I, somebody asked me about playing her where we were talking about her on the seven innings podcast about one of like the all-time greatest sluggers. And I was like, yeah, I played her when she was like a sophomore or junior. And I'm now I'm like, Oh no, she was a freshman. Like (laughs) she never felt like a freshman. It was like so annoying. I'm like, who's this like super talented, composed, athletic, strong, like like mentally stable, like freshman that's coming in and just like uh, hitting off of the best pitcher in the country in Jackie Trina at the time. Like, like it was nothing. It was crazy. She was definitely a mature hitter. She yeah. she knew what yeah. she was looking for, and she crushed it every time she saw it. So Hunt gets the base hit to start off the inning, right? We, we, you guys have had a hit the previous inning. So you kind of start to feel a little bit of this momentum. The dugout's starting to get louder. The crowd is, I mean, covered in plastic uh, ponchos, but going crazy. I, I think – this is the point where I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I start to remember, like, oh, yeah, this is when it starts to get good. Um, so it does look like it's raining a little bit harder, but maybe that is just TV. <laughs> no, so we get to the point where now it looks like Kehlani's having trouble gripping the ball. Like, she just does. I don't know if she's just uncomfortable. It, it seems like it's wet. Um, but the ball starts flying out. Um, this is kind of where the wheels start to come off. Um, could you feel that on uh, in the dugout? Could you kind of feel yeah. that happening? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. And it was kind of like one of those things, too, where, like, she kept looking to the dugout. And you're like, oh, keep looking to the dugout. It means you're scared. It means you want your coach to come bail you out. Like, let's go. Like, so you just look for those kind of things. And then when Coach Gasso comes out, you're just like, all right, they're struggling. We Like, come on, we got it. This is our push right now. You know, it's it, anytime you play this talented of a team, we're just like, we're praying for the break. We're praying <laughs> for like them to just make an like, just because she's just that good. So it's just for how excited we got over the fact that she was struggling to pitch in the rain is just a direct reflection of how dominant she is. Um, but yeah, we, we felt like we found this like chink in the armor where we we're like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is our chance now. Uh, so of course we wanted to continue playing. And what time is it right now? Is is it getting pretty late? I had no sense of time in this game. I could tell you, I thought we finished the game around, around like 10 o'clock and someone later was like, I stayed up after, you know, 2 a.m. to watch you play on TV. And I was like, what were you watching? We had no idea what time it was. I had it. It wasn't until like two years later that I actually went and did the timing of it where I was like, trying to measure uh we didn't even eat a meal since lunch by the way like this was going on like 12 hours of us <laughs> not having eaten anything Jackie and I did eat a pretzel before the game. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tradition also so okay tradition superstitions okay talk to yep. me about tradition I used to have a blueberry bagel and a sesame seed bagel and then I, I didn't have both I would split it with okay. my best friend and then I would have like one half of the blueberry bagel and then one half of the sesame bagel. And that was like my pre-game meal. I don't know why, but <laughs> I re- like that's what I did. I went to Noah's Bagels in Westwood and that's what I had. Like, that was it. That was my pre-game meal. Uh, my mom's like, sure, you want to have a bagel before you? <laughs> that's it. That's what I want. I'll wait till you hear ours. <laughs> <laughs> So Jackie and I would split a Diet Coke and a pretzel from any stadium we were at before the game started. And our director of ops, or and actually our um, assistant athletic director at this game would run up and grab us the Diet Coke and the soft pretzel from whatever stadium. And we literally kind of blamed her, I think on one point when we lost the game and we didn't have it. We are like, see, you got to get us a, a soft pretzel before every game. <laughs> Uh, not spoiled at all. Cassie, do you have a pregame meal? Uh, no meal. Um, I used to have green tea and I used to write your best on my wrist. I think those were like my main, my main superstitions. They were more, I guess, routines, I guess. Um, and I had to have oatmeal every morning. That's, okay. all, that's true. That was, that wasn't games. That was, that was 365. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, did you guys just see Hunt told me it was going to yeah. be inside. I stepped I, in the bucket and it was outside. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? Come on, Hunt. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she, I wish she was going to join us today. Yeah. yeah, it's her birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, her. <laughs> Maybe we could get her to jump on. <laughs> Maybe, no? no, happy birthday. She, her, her family threw her surprise party, so. It's kind of important. Yeah, it's kind of important. Kind of, we're kind of a big deal, but. <laughs> so she's telling you that pitch was inside. Did she do this thing? Well, yeah, if you notice, they went, the catcher went and talked to Kalani about changing up signs, I think, right after that, because Hunt did figure something out, but. Yeah, and you yeah. can kind of see the, the rain on your helmet there, Cassie. I mean, it's not too bad, but it's coming down a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, what I, what I think is crazy is we get that runner on second, and I totally forgot she gets the next two outs. She, she got Jackie and I right after that. Um, yeah. So that entire, this entire fourth inning, when we were down three, nothing happened with two outs. Oh, yeah. It, it's funny, like, I don't know about you guys, but when I go back and, like, rewatch this game, I, there's so much of it that I don't remember, and mm -hmm. I forget, and it's cool, though. Like, I, I don't know, like, I just noticed that Jackie on Kaylani's second at bat, she gave up the home run on the first strikes her out, and then strikes her out to end the game. Like, after you give up a home run on your, on your first at bat to Kaylani, mm -hmm. then you come back and strike her out twice. Like, that's so – uh, incredible Tough. and that was a monster bomb too yeah. it wasn't just you know like your typical home run that was just like a, and it was a high and outside pitch that she just yanked down the line as far as you've ever seen someone <laughs> hit the ball um but no doubt yeah. well that thing just drops off the table mm. and i was super confident on it too i really thought <laughs> until right about there that i was gonna hit it <laughs> <laughs> ah Took a hack though. Super yeah. far up in the box too. Was that like, were you up just to try and get it before it was going? Was that um, part of your plan? So I don't know if you guys remember, but the whole game, everybody was up and on the plate, except in the bottom of the fourth, he told the righties to get back in the box again because she made the adjustment from the night before. So I thought that was so, I remember Murphy came into the dugout into, or, or into the huddle and I'm actually just remembering he was so definitive about it too. Even if it was the right plan or wrong plan, he was so like, this is going to work that we're like, okay. Mm -hmm. So the plan was, I think, for the lefties to remain up and on top of the plate and the righties were then to back up. Um, and that was how Hunt, I guess, got her hit. Kendall, it's how you got your hit. Just, so the righties are way like back foot on the back line. Almost. And then the lefties front foot on the front like part of the box so completely different i didn't like that strike <laughs> that was, was way outside oh, wow. <laughs> no she was really cool though. i really liked her as an umpire that yeah. was just a mistake yeah she was super awesome you talked to her during the game yeah her actually i didn't usually talk to the umpires too much which is surprising because i like to talk but with her, you know, she was just she was just really friendly, and she was like, you know, that one just a little bit outside. So with her, it was really comfortable talking to her. So and I never remembered any other umpire's name. And of course, this is the biggest game of you know my career. So I think she stuck out a little bit more. She was awesome. She shook my hand after the game. Super cool. I thought she was one of our better ones that we've had because she was really good. Me and Jackie are really hard to call. Yeah, they throw so hard. Um, did you guys hear how I saw her at the convention uh, like five years later? Allie, it was like five, six years later and Coach Allie has her arm around someone and she's like, Cass, do you know who this is? And I was like, look, and I was like, she kind of looks familiar. And she goes, do you notice my ponytail? And she went like this and I go, you called strike three. I was like, that, I, I, I just pictured your arm going up. I was like, it was you. <laughs> You're the umpire. <laughs> but she was awesome. You. She told I us the to whole background you. story of the, of the rain yeah. delay and, and all of that. That's cool. She what called our, she, the next year she called our first series um, in the SEC and Murph comes over to me and he's like, go up and tell the umpire thank you. And I was like, what am I telling the umpire? Like, thank you for like, we're the away team and I'm hitting up like first. And he's like, she'll just go tell her thank you. And I'm like, hey, I just wanted to say thank you. She's like, no, it's so fun to call you. And I'm like, oh my God. And I wanted to like give her a big hug, but I was like, okay, play it cool. Like, I don't want to go hug the umpire before we're about to go start our game. <laughs> What did she say, Cassie, what did she say when you met her at the convention? What was she saying about the rain delay? So it was, it was funny because she was saying she was getting, you know, so much, she was getting so many comments from Oklahoma's dugout about, about it. And then she knew 
because it wasn't such a big contrast that the second she, if, if they were going to call the game, how upset our side was going to be. So I think she was saying that it ended up being someone above her, uh, what, whoever ended up calling. I can't remember exactly who it was, but I, it, you'll, you'll see in a second, we, our dugout gets, our Adam, our volunteer assistant got mad and said something. And she goes, not, not my, not <laughs> what my job is like, and just kept walking. So she was saying that she, she didn't, she didn't like that. She had kind of just put her hands up and was like, that wasn't me, but <laughs> she just uh, said, she didn't, she didn't know what to, what to call. Um, but it wasn't her call anyway, at the, at the end of the day. Probably umpire in chief, I would guess. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, but I think it was somebody who was in the stands, at least for this championship game, or or somebody who was in the booth, whatever it was. Um, it was it was neat. It was I think uh, what also was cool is she wasn't actually supposed to come to Oklahoma City for this trip, and it was because somebody else had backed out that she ended up being the person to come last minute. Um, okay. and how, just how the rotation worked and how she ended up calling this game. It was a dream of hers to be able to call the championship game. So it was neat. It was just so cool to have dinner with her and talk to her about all that. Here's the frustration. <laughs> They're mad. But if you saw even how, you know, Schultz threw the ball back to Kaylani, she nonchalantly tagged our, our player. You could tell she was super frustrated at this point. So we haven't gone in during delay yet. We're just about to happen. Look at Emily in the stand. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> <a> riot. <laughs> Those sparkle headbands were all the rage. Remember that? <laughs> that they were. Remember that? <laughs> that makes me feel old, actually. I'm like, I haven't seen one of those in a while. <laughs> it, we yeah. weren't allowed to wear them. It, it's, it's funny how things like, like are so cool <laughs> for a little while. And then you look back and you're like, God, those are lame. <laughs> you know what I wish we had when we were in college because we didn't? They made us wear boys basketball shorts. What was yeah. leggings? You know, leggings yeah. were not a thing when we were in college. <laughs> You're right. Oh yeah, we had cotton shirts and yeah. mesh shorts. That's some mesh shorts. Mesh shorts. Here, did you wear shorts? Wear mesh shorts? Did you wear shorts in games? Yeah. Did you like that or did you hate it? And we we only did it. I think my freshman year we wore okay. the super shiny. I don't know if you guys remember the super shiny blue uh, gold UCLA jerseys. Um, yeah. We wore those my freshman year, and then we got we ended up having pants. Um, I think my sophomore year we got pants, uh, but I was really mad because we had black cleats, and I didn't think they matched our uniforms. And I was like, we need blue. So we had blue, and then there was a big like debacle about wearing black cleats. Like, and I wanted white, and I'm like, they're gonna get so dirty. I'm like, we'll clean them. Like, clean your cleats. Like, that was the biggest deal that we had with our uniforms. Like, we just. We had shorts my freshman year, and then we got into pants. But yeah, no, we didn't have leggings. Lululemon came out like during my like senior year. Like Lululemon started. That's when we all started wearing Lululemon. But it wasn't allowed. <laughs> it wasn't allowed, so it was like off campus. But no, I remember my freshman year. I had a. Um, I was joking around with everyone because everyone had an internet phone. How I called it. I was like, "You guys all have an internet phone." Well, I have a tip calculator on mine <laughs> and Snake. Like, that's how old I am. <laughs> At the end of every dinner, I'd be like, you guys, I got it. I got the tip calculator. <laughs> you guys can tweet for me. No, we had sidekicks. Yeah, I know. I wanted a sidekick so bad. Hmm. Yeah, Lauren School had that on her visit. She had yeah, yep, she did. Yep. Sidekicks were like rage. Jen Schroeder had a sidekick and was like bedazzled, like <laughs> on the, like, the back side of it. She like flip it open and it was like had all this like jewels on the back of it. Like that was like the biggest deal. Uh, she was like the head of all of the athletics, like just you know, mayor of Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> that sidekick with all the bedazzles. So we've got still two out rally. I mean, this whole thing started with two outs. Mm -hmm. And you're right, like looking back, you I didn't even realize it was you know, two outs. It's, you know, throwing the ball around for a couple times, and we, we were looking at Kehlani, she's trying to settle in. Doesn't look like it's raining too hard at this point. I know we keep talking about the rain, but that's a big part of <laughs> what was happening. I, uh, I actually, I thought for some reason the rain delay happened before locks at bat. I think it does, because I have a helmet on, and I piled up to Merck, and right. I'm looking right now. So that's so what I'm, they not show it? They might, they, I think they, in some broadcasts now, they'll skip that portion of it. Yeah, so I think the rain delay, 
Yeah, I think it did. Yeah. I was just thinking, I was like, Locke definitely got this hit after the fact because yeah. Kendall, didn't you like going back to the base? Weren't you like, hey, don't worry, you can hit it anywhere. And I've got <laughs> really good catcher speed, so I'll score. Don't you worry. <laughs> I told you see it. You know, this next play, like Murph is a, like, this is what I'm talking about. Murph's a genius because he sends her. Like, <laughs> like she, I like, told like, you, Kendall, you know, like, <laughs> you'd been out if like the ball wasn't wet. <laughs> I told you, like, we have a lot in common, but our <laughs> speed, we sure did. <laughs> we did. Actually, this broadcast maybe looked kind of fast, but... <laughs> that, that looked great. In reality, not. <laughs> uh, you know, they do that line test where they put you on a line and make you run. And, like, me coming in as a freshman, I'm like, mm, I'll get midway, you know. <laughs> Start running, and I slowly creep to the very last spot on the team so i was the slowest person on our team and most sent me right here <laughs> hey, look at you look at you going around with that. Woo, 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 woo. nice turn i was trying your lead was, uh, was all right but you're waiting to make sure the ball was down but it's a pretty good turn thank you Mouth <laughs> yeah. two bases let's go yeah, yeah. oh look at those bond streaks uh, so who's up now let's see we got that was yeah, it's Conley's, a lot of Conley's so laser. Yeah, this is the best hit of the day. Yeah, it's yeah. my favorite hit of the game. This is my favorite at bat. Do you guys remember Courtney facing Jackie Traina in uh, two years before in preseason? And she got she swung at a pitch like she just did. Again, and then against Jackie, Jackie threw it even further out later in the at bat. And Courtney was so, so frustrated, she swung at it again. And she got chewed out and was like, basically because she let her frustration take over. And I remember Courtney texted a bunch of people on the team and was like, I'm going to get that same thing in the national championship game, but I'm going to take it. And so I remember being in the dugout watching this at bat and being like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's actually happening. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. It's just one of the coolest things. It's just, I, I feel like everything that we did, we wanted to be the first from the SEC. So like, even in a fall game, she was still thinking like, yeah, we're doing this for the national championship, you know? I, mean, take it. I don't know. I just, just I thought that threw was so the cool. same pitch like two more times further out and she took them. Yeah. Cassie, you remember a lot of things. She is amazing. She's amazing. She's I like wish I had Harvard, her brain power. Like library of content. I'd be like CEO of everything. Easy. Here it is. Oops. It's a good swing. I think, didn't Courtney say she faced Kehlani in travel ball too? I think uh, her and Jackie did at some point. She remembers playing against her. If anyone remembers, I count on you, Cassie. <laughs> oh, good take. Great take. And what happens is when it starts to rain, you don't trust your grip, you start to throw carefully, or you start to try to steer your pitch. Throw carefully. She threw this one carefully. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. That was a laser. Yeah, mm -hmm. shot. Lock with the slide home. <laughs> That's big time. That was huge. That was a huge Did you see P-Tech? She's going wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can tell you. It was all on the, out the like, out of the dugout. That's crazy. Do you guys remember in the rain delay how crazy Courtney was? Yeah. She was, like, was. leading us on the 20 on one. She, she was going crazy. So, like, I felt like I had a really good feeling at this point when she was up to bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Courtney, when she comes around and slides at home on this, like, next, when she scores on this next play, she's, like, she it's a really classic yeah. choir to I mean, that's pitch. It's not a bad pitch. She was the, went out and got that outside pitch and drove it right back up the middle. It's not a bad, you know, it's not like it's right down the middle. She she went and got that. Yeah. Courtney was an extremely talented hitter. Like, was one of the highest recruited kids coming in. Like, had some ups and downs. But when she was on, she was on. Like, she was she stepped up in big moments a lot in her career. Yeah, I was going to say, she was a crush. Yeah, and they're playing almost like mid. The outfield playing middle. So, she comes, she comes in, in a little bit. Yeah, if I was if I was Oklahoma's outfield, we would have been doing the exact same thing. If it, you know, it we, we hadn't hit a ball that hard in a long time against her. <laughs> exactly. Do you guys notice Murphy when he waves people home, runs home with them? He ends up right. <laughs> it's awesome. 
<laughs> it's like the best was that when when we were playing Stanford, Stanford and you had the, the ground ball and Jackie scored. He's right next to her in her face. Jackie, just the, <laughs> just the best. He's like racing home. Yeah, yeah. literally. Gosh, she threw hard. Yeah, and it was crazy too because we got up in front of the box, so it probably felt like she was like seventy six. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's I think I was thinking, I'm like, they're way in the front of the box, and she's throwing gas. But then her change up, she threw her change up literally like fifty eight miles an hour. So yeah, and it wasn't too slow. It was like that perfect speed to really throw you off. There's <laughs> our foot, so great. <laughs> He's like in the batter's box. I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's cool because it y we had a team that wasn't afraid to act like a bunch of kids playing the game, you know. And I think he he was in the same boat. It's just you get so emotional for for good reasons, good emotion, not too over, not overwhelming, not it just. If you're ever going to run home with someone, why is it not that moment <laughs> to take the lead in the national championship game? I think the other thing too is like everybody asks, you know, always has that question, like why does it take a team so long to get to the World Series? Like once they get there to win one, mm -hmm. I think like as a head coach too, you have to figure out like what you want to act like because if you change the way you act during the World Series, like it's going to reflect upon your team. And I think that's something that coaches have to learn as well as players. So like how do you, you know, stay the course and not let the moment or the stage get too big so you change your attitude so your players don't feel like they're stifled or suffocating because of so much pressure mm -hmm. yeah that's a really good point yeah but I think Murph had to learn that like I think it took him a while to figure that out and I remember him being more relaxed this year than he was the previous year and comparatively he was probably way more relaxed than maybe the first or second time he went to, to OKC mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and the more you go, the more you get used to it as well. So it's almost like he's, you know, figuring out, like we talked about when you first get there, like, oh my gosh, and it's so big. But at this point, from an outside perspective, you all are just having fun, like playing the game that you love. Now, yeah, they're throwing the ball around a bit, but I mean, you're still playing a game that you love. You're, you're feeding off of this energy and even before this, you all look like you're just having the time of your life. Like, like this is the greatest thing. We're, we're playing in the national championship game. It's not too big. Like, sometimes it can get, like, get super nervous. But from watching, it just is like, oh, I was talking to my friend. I'm like, I kind of wish I was part of this, like, 2012 Bama team. Like, they're having, like, they're having fun. Like, you're part of teams like that. And I think it all starts, like you talked about, is, like, keeping it loose and, and – in the fall when you start getting to know one another as a team and just from an outside it looks like your camaraderie is just it's super special like, yeah and to build on that one of the coolest things we did i think cassie you came up with it was like what are we going to bring to the table we had like a meeting and it was we didn't feel like i don't think we felt like we were not on the same page but it was like everybody was so new we had to get comfortable with each other um so cassie was you know, brave enough to be like, hey, let's let's say what we're going to bring to the table this year, um, everyone. So it was so cool to go around the room and think about it for a few days and then come back and say, hey, I'm going to bring this. And that was something done outside of our coaches um, that Cassie kind of put together. So if that tells you anything about the team that we were, it was like we weren't just being led by our coaching staff. We were being led by these amazing humans that we had on the team with us. And I can say that I for sure made a huge difference in my personality and my my wants and desires tended to not be so much about me like they used to be in the past, you know, you tend to be a little bit more selfish when you're younger um, and got to learn to steer away from that to be a better person, which was so cool. And let's talk about who you all looked up to. So like we can, we talk about this game, but I know as a young player, I loved watching Tasha Watley, um, Julie Adams and looked up to certain players during my career. Um, who, who was your idol? Who did you look up to um, as a young athlete um, kind of growing up in softball? Cassie? So I actually, uh, one of my travel ball coaches when I was 15 gave me a DVD and said uh, this was the first team to win a national championship east of the Mississippi. And it was almost like there's hope for the Northeast, like softball's coming our way. And um, 
I, I grew up, I was, when I was six, eight, nine, and 10, the Yankees won the World Series. And I got these VHSs of their championship games. And I remember I would sit and I would watch them on repeat until I knew, and you know, my parents were like, gosh, you're obsessed with winning championships. And, and, it, and then I got the, the Michigan 2005 DVD and I was like, you know, I'd watch that on repeat. And I just, so I think it was, there was, yes, there were certain players that I looked up to, but it was really championship teams that I was just enamored with. And I just thought how interesting that culture was and how special they had a chance to celebrate a moment that so few people even have the opportunity to. And, and the fact that we had a chance, we had four years at a chance to know what that moment felt like. I mean, shoot, if there's inflection in my voice, it's, it's because it is that special. And, and Kendall and Burrow have spoken to how, how just, how incredible that these moments are to really reflect on. So the 2005 Michigan team. That's the last two of the finals. <laughs> I know. I was about to say, Tara, I'm sorry. I know that. I know. I was, I was, I was, <laughs> hates that, too. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, they were such a great team to play against. And it was a just with tooth and nail series. I mean, we won the first game and then um, end up dropping the next two, but um, they were, they were a heck of a team. And was it Kaylani's sister on that team or am I way off? Um, uh, Jenny Ritter was um, uh, pitching and then Samantha Finley had um, the first baseman. Yeah, the three run bomb. And yeah, that's it was. That's what I see now. Yeah, but no. So I, I'll tell you what, I just, I, I remember thinking how cool that was for softball and even my freshman year, Allie Gardner went to a high school down the road for me. And so she hits the walk-off grand slam. And it's one of those things that it's, it, that stung, but I was thinking, I was like, gosh, that was so good for softball. Like, you know, I, the Northeast struggles so mightily with softball and we lose our best athletes to about three other sports before softball is even considered. And I just, I want so badly for it to grow. So I just, I remember when Michigan won it, I just, I remember thinking there was a chance. And I, you know, I, I know how silly that seems, but I just thought there was a chance. <laughs> No, it's huge for our sport. And then you guys winning the first championship year for the SEC, I think it started a trickle in the parity in our sport. Started, You started to see it it grow. And, yes, so I love when UCLA wins. Yes, of course I do. But also, you, you can appreciate good talent, good teams, and good camaraderie. And at the end of the day, if our sport grows, that's what we all want. Is I, I think we're all in, you know, agreement that is we think it's the greatest sport of all time, you know. So the kids in the Northeast that are watching this, I hope you start playing and keep playing softball so that we can have another championship over there. Okay, sorry, Kendall, who's your, who did you look up to? Um, I'd have to say, like, very close personally. I think um, coming to Alabama once I got there, it's like I wanted to be Whitney Larson with every bone in my body because she's, like, the coolest person I know. Um, and she was amazing. I, like, talk about the most clutch player I've ever played with. Um, she could bat ninth, she could bat third, she could bat third, she could bat anywhere, and she could fight off a million pitches and then hit a home run. So I wanted to be Whitney really bad. But um, as far as like sports in general, I was lucky enough to grow up in Plain City, where we actually had the pro fast pitch league was was there, the PSL, I think, and I can't even remember the name of it um, at the time. But we had a stadium and they played there, so we got to see all the girls play. And at that time, they were you know so much older and wiser and great um to watch they like venus williams and i mean I'm, venus i can't venus taylor i'm sorry <laughs> venus taylor my my dad loved her she was amazing and then like mo trainer trainer and all those people it's like so cool to see those those ladies play um as a young kid and i was lucky to live there and i was lucky for my parents to see all that to see like the excitement that could be built off of it and i was lucky to have amazing parents that wanted me to be in that situation well, you know, Venus uh, Williams isn't a bad guy. I, I, I don't know why I threw her name out there. <laughs> I was like, you know, I know two Venuses, I guess. <laughs> I mean, she's pretty good at sports as well. Yeah, like, she's not bad. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I would just pass it over to Venus. Like, yeah, I, I, I love Venus Williams too. Uh, <laughs> she's amazing. Kayla, <laughs> Kayla, how about you? Uh, yeah, I think like, you know, you always have people in your life that like, you know, are your inspiration. And I think like, first and foremost, like I grew up with like my older cousin, she played like all the summer ball ASA. She was a lefty slapper. She's like a big reason why I, you know, wanted to play softball so bad because I just wanted to be like her. And then, 
you know, from like a college softball standpoint, like I loved obviously watching Natasha Wally, Caitlin Lowe, Brittany Lestraps, like those kind of like lefty slappers. Um, but it really wasn't until I watched a lot of softball that like I could zone in. And uh, for me, one of the people that like I watched before I got to Alabama was Brittany Rogers, who's a four time All American for Bama. Um, and I was just so enamored with her presence. She was always just so calm. She looked so confident out there. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, you learn some of the like intangible stuff is you watch somebody else, like the way they carry themselves and just their like aura on the field. And she had that for me. And that was like a, I, I wanted to be just like that. I wanted to be present on the field. All great um, role models. And so you're at Bama, you've got, you're there, you figured out your team, you're, you also, as an athlete, have other athletes that you're involved with as well. So what was your, like, our sister team was, like, we hung out with football a lot, but we also hung out with soccer. We had, like, what other teams uh, on campus were you guys super close with, if, if you were? Like, because you, you guys were, you know, you're all training. Um, was it a spring sport, fall sport? Did you guys have another um, sport that you hung out with more than um, the others? For me, it was the volleyball team because uh, two of them were my roommates, and I went through a, a big spell of hanging out with them a lot in my senior year, but um, I really liked the volleyball team. They were awesome, and I know some of the other girls hang out with the soccer team a lot. A lot. I think you did a pretty good job of uh, kind of hanging out with like a, I mean, I remember going to football games and we were in the student athlete section, and you're just so proud to be an athlete at Alabama, and I felt like everyone, you know, you'd see someone with a the apparel gear on and you kind of give them a head nod like okay we're, we're both athletes but Kayla uh I, it's so funny calling you Kayla I always call you bro but bro and I did a leadership um seminar in the fall uh I think it was I think it was that that year and it was essentially all the like two leadership representatives from each team got to do this two-day seminar and that was probably one of the coolest experiences I've ever had because we got to interact with we got to interact with the gymnastics team who just won a national championship. So of course we're like, Hey, what, you know, what'd you guys do? And, you know, we do the same thing with football and then, you know, like, Hey, so when you guys won it, <laughs> what any tips for us, <laughs> you know? So I think that was, there was just such a culture of champions that it just seemed like it was a mix of a lot of different teams, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I will also say, so we had Jordan Patterson on our team and her mom is Sarah Patterson, who's obviously like the gymnastics head coach at the time. So I felt like we had a kinship with the gymnastics team because um, obviously the Patterson family was a huge part of both sports. So I always felt like super tied into gymnastics. I wanted them to win probably more, uh, if not more than anybody else on campus, because I knew it like had a direct meaning to Jordan on our team. Like I wanted her mom to win another championship and she's like, um, incredible too. Uh, and then also I, I, this is like, goes without saying having like Nick Saban on your campus and like the football team, that's like becoming one of the greatest dynasties of all time. Like it's, it's just cool because you see what it takes. Like you just see winning DNA. Like it, it's just cool to have that be a part of your culture at the school in the athletic department. Yeah. I was, I was, help, I was trying to lead you all that way. Cause I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, okay. let's talk about these tailgates, like these implements, Alabama tailgates, because I've heard stories that you guys throw the best tailgates in, uh, uh, in the entire United States of America, maybe world. I don't know, probably world. Um, so what happens at an Alabama tailgate? Like what, what makes them so special? Like, I've seen some really fancy ones. I've seen some like rowdy ones. What is it? What is it like to, to tailgate for an Alabama football game? I can I can just share one story. Uh, I the biggest game I had ever been to was a Jets game, and uh, gosh, I was so happy this ball didn't leave the park. Sorry, yeah. I just got yeah. it. Well, dropped all over again. Whew. <laughs> Uh, defensive play by guys too like going back great. shoot uh I had I have never experienced anything like that in my entire life to see an Alabama football game I've been to Ranger games and I've been to Jets games and I thought like okay this is New York professional sports there is absolutely nothing like it I walked onto the quad and the whole quad started cheering and I was like what was that and someone was like Auburn just lost <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay so like if that gives you an idea of how in tuned, I mean, the state economy of Alabama fluctuates 7% based on an Alabama football win or loss. 
that is like, that is insane to think about. You know what I mean? People are upset and they don't buy things or they're like really happy and they're like, we won. So it just is like, I've never seen something mean so much to a state. I yeah. haven't. It just is incredible to see. It's just different. And the highest grossing target also every Saturday in the fall is Tuscaloosa Target. Wow. Five millions. Look at these facts that we're just yeah. all doing. 100%. Oh my gosh. Let's go, bro. Which one's yours? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, Somebody explain what the tailgate entails. Because my family does tailgates at like, UCLA tailgates, and there's a certain way. But Bama tailgates, from what I understand, are just another level well, it's like a few days in advance not even yeah, uh, it's, it's yeah it's like a wednesday people are setting up their tents on the quad because you're not going to get a spot um they have booth rentals where they're putting 65 inch tvs to see the rest of the games um and literally every inch of the quad is covered and good luck trying to find someone if you get lost because there's no service because there's 103,000 people using one cell tower <laughs> so literally you're lost you're like hey you know I don't know where to go and they're like turn left at the white tent you're like there's 8,000 white tents in my line of view right now so it's just amazing it's truly incredible and like I always try to get all my friends to come to an Alabama game to, to the area because I know they're going to be literally mind blown the minute they get off of the bus because you have to take a bus to get to the quad because there's no way you're going to walk through all of these people that far it's called the Crimson Ride. Crimson Ride, baby. Best <laughs> name of bus system ever. <laughs> Emma Beats, Crimson Ride. I've got to write these all down. Exactly. You got to come to a tailgate. Yeah, next Tara, season. this is like the obvious thing is that you got to come. We'll invite, I'll <laughs> be the one to invite you. Let's go. I think. Mean I still think one of the coolest things was this past year for LSU. It was kind of this impromptu alumni yeah. thing where I, I don't know about you guys, but the second I think the couple of people that need to fly to Tuscaloosa say, okay, we're going to fly this weekend. Everyone's like, well, I'll just drive. That'll be my weekend. Literally. So we had, I mean, we had the current team. We had all the way back to the national championship team and beforehand, we had people with their kids and husbands. And that was so cool to be a part of. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we had of our 19 players on our national championship team, we had 15 of them come for the LSU football game, which is 20, insane. 15, right? On a girl. What? 20, 20 on one, bro. Sorry, 20, 15, 20 20, something like that. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. No, we had a lot. It was amazing. That was so much fun. Was I wish really you guys cool. would coordinate that every year for me. Yeah. <laughs> so 20 of the 15 former, of the 20 were in the 20. this past year. Yeah. Past fall. Ver versus LSU. Mm -hmm. And so was Donald Trump. That's right. He heard we were going. He was like, I better show up. <laughs> uh, like, does he have your tailgate? Like, what was that? Like, it was, yeah. security <laughs> detail? Like, was it much more difficult to get to your white tent of a thousand? Yeah, there were some pretty intense CIA guys out there. That was I saw AK-47 in the, in the stadium. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you had tailgate with the current players, past players. Like that's what alumni is about. So at, at, at some point, like how cool was that to kind of connect and, and be together as one big family? Like what was that experience like? I mean, you guys have like the broom bubble, like ours is Bama U and uh, really, really strong tradition. I honestly, they're really similar. I think you guys have um, – uh, a little bit like I mean you've been around longer obviously more national championships so it goes a lot longer but I think what's blossoming is like something really similar where there's a like a huge pride and like family and it, and it lasts and we still all talk like there's no um, really division between different classes like if you're part of Bama U you're part of Bama U like period so uh, I think that's really cool and that's that kind of developed I feel like um, you know in the years the few years before we got there and really has blossomed since yeah. You guys are in trouble. We're yeah, we're coming for you, Bruin Bubble. For you. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think it's so cool, and I don't know if you experienced this, is even the current players that I haven't met yet, they have heard so much about the alumni that they come up to us and give us a hug, and they act like they already know us, and it makes us feel so comfortable because sometimes there's that awkward tension where it's like, okay, they were 
either you're the current player and you're like, wow, that person was really good. And they're, you know, you don't want to intrude on them or vice versa. You're the alumni and you're like, okay, I don't want to intrude on these, you know, kids who are, you know, 10, 12 years younger than me. Yeah, when they see me, Cassie, they're like, wow, she's old. <laughs> 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 the age gets old. <laughs> No, that's I yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's special, and that's probably it's what it's all about. It's about having your family and that sisterhood, and being able to go back and be a part of something that's bigger than you, and know that they're gonna have your back no matter what. Not just on the field, but in life, and and after you're you know done playing softball, and that's what's so special. And I I've seen that, and I've talked to Emily about it. I talked to Jen Schroeder because she was at a tailgate. She was very um, jealous. Yeah, everybody else on. Yeah. She was there. She was like, oh, they're alumni. They're starting to get it. They're starting to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's like, they're, they're, they're on their way. I'm like, yeah. So for, for me, that's really cool to see. And I think oh, hopefully that grows amongst other programs. And it's there. Um, it's there. We're just not as, as um, highlighted as it. So Jackie's up to bat right now. This is a huge at bat. This is huge. We, um, we also missed one of the most selfless things that you could ever do on a softball field. Kayla Hunt had a runner on second base and hit a ground ball to second. And mm -hmm. that's the only reason why Jen was able to score right there. Because mm -hmm. that was a hard hit ball to the outfield. Was, I don't know if, I don't, yeah, I don't know if she's able to score. And this is a big insurance run, obviously. Very big. <laughs> Jen and I are like the same speed, so she probably. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty hard hit ball to right. So you're right. She's at two. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Murph likes to run down the third baseline, so maybe he said in her he center. <laughs> yeah. he, he probably would have with how wet, yeah, you yeah. know, stuff was getting. But um, that was an O2 count, by the way. I I didn't realize that in a couple times watching. Also, Jackie has thrown 718 pitches on the week at this point. <laughs> you know what that means, Cassie? <laughs> You've caught that many pitches. <laughs> I squatted that many times. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry Kendall has like the bruises on her left hand to show it honestly no kidding I like by the end of the season I was like my fingers broken I had like a pad this thick in my mitt to try to stop it but it was just like a whip constantly hitting me in the hand for I mean we always talk about the pitchers we always talk about how many pitches they've thrown like you know what they're doing and really like you're talking about the selfless like the catchers you're, you're holding it down for for the defense you really are back there you just don't get as much love as um you probably should uh, yeah but i think i was i mean standing in center was always great to see a relationship pitcher catcher relationship and i always have the biggest respect for catchers because they do you're doing the selfless i mean you're literally squatting there how long is this game it's been raining like you're, you're just hanging out back there, just squatting in a squat. Like, you get used to it. But um, in terms of Jackie, when she was throwing that pitch, like, did she get better as she kept throwing, or did you, would you think that she was getting tired? Oh, no, I think I don't think she got tired at all, in my opinion. Um, she was always very good at maintaining her velocity. Um, and I think early in the game, she was a little bit too careful, and I think that's why she made some mistakes. But – um, that typically wasn't her personality type. Her personality type was like, I'm going to go right at them. It just happened to be that they were just such good hitters um, that you kind of, you know, couldn't blow it by them like you could a lot of the other teams um, with her throwing probably close to 72 miles an hour constantly. Um, so, I mean, really, she, she was not one of those ones to tire out. She was strong, super strong, um, and she could, she could pitch for a long time. And that just shows how many – how many games she pitched in the season? I think, how many, Cassie, do you think she pitched? Probably like 60 out of the 68. That she pitched in, that she had an appearance in? Yeah, yeah. She, it, was, it was a good bit. Because yeah. um, we had one of our pitchers, Taylor ACL, this year. Um, mm -hmm. So we had two pitchers, and then Locke came out of pitching retirement, essentially, and then beat Georgia and Florida at the end of the year. <laughs> that was so much fun. And you know what? Like, I never caught her either. So it was like, here she is. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the best thing is Locke goes, I don't really know where it's going. <laughs> she didn't. I'm not kidding. Glock was one of those players, like, you call her a rise ball. Unfortunately, she got a lot called early on, and it would, like, go 10 feet over your head or straight in the dirt. So you were just, like, praying, please. This is a man. the right one. 
<laughs> this is Amanda Locke. She's yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's amazing. She's hilarious. She had the sickest curveball and, and, and oh dirty little drop ball by the time she was a senior. It was just so spinny that you were always way out in front of it and rolled it over. It was awesome. You know, you know, it was funny. We we would play teams like Georgia and Florida who were ex, ex, used to, they're expecting Jackie, right? So they probably geared up the pitching machine and then they were so out in front against Locke. That's hilarious. <laughs> Poor Locke would play against midweek game teams that weren't used to seeing fast pitching at all. And they timed her up perfectly. <laughs> I was like, Locke was like, eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Liberty hits like 10 ball runs and she beats Florida. <laughs> like no hits Florida yeah. for five minutes. Yeah, she it makes no sense. Sense. For, for the SEC <laughs> tournament championship. Yeah. Gosh. Amazing. You all are still calling your own pitches, correct? Like it's not armband. I got to call this this season. Which you, called, you called the your own pitches. Mm -hmm. so game plan before, watch film, came, like, came up with a game plan, and then during in-game, you were calling pitches. Yeah, right? and then if I, know, if I needed help, I'd definitely look to staff and be like, hey, what do you think right now? And she'd throw me up what she thought I should throw. So it was really cool. That was my favorite season, I think, because of that aspect that I got to call it. The other seasons, I didn't. Did you go to armbands at any point? We had on my first three years, and then um, I wore one, but I don't. Did I wear one? The whole field didn't have them. It wasn't. It wasn't. No, like I don't think that wore one. It was just the catcher. Your first. I thought it was your first one or two years, maybe. Yeah, I think it was my first three years that we wore the armband. Oh, you had it even there. Yeah. It, we were kind of like the trendsetters there because not everyone else had that, and we had the football ball arm sleeve. You guys had different <laughs> ones for a different innings, right? Yeah, you flip it. Yep. So we're going through all the runs. <laughs> what is it, five more at this point? That was so cute. That's a pretty special moment. I mean, big hug after you score, like a run, like, hey, I would have that over my fireplace, like, <laughs> still living the dream. <laughs> and what do you guys think about this new, like, the pitches coming from the dugout? I was like, let's, Kendall, do you, did you like calling the game? Yeah, yeah oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I don't have one on. I just didn't wear anything. Um, oh yeah, I thought that was so cool. And I feel like I could see so much and have like this instinct of what, and like kind of how Cassie said earlier when I would just like give her a sly look and she knew I want to throw to her. It's kind of the same thing between your pitcher. You're like, you know what she feels really good throwing in that moment. So you want to rely on that instinct. So, I mean, for me, that's like one of the coolest underrated things that people get to do. And I don't think anyone else really gets to do that anymore. Um, it's so controlled by the pitching coach. Um, and I don't think a lot of people even knew I was calling this season because it was common for the coach to call. Yeah, and Kayla, you're calling a lot of games at this point. So pretty much everybody, everybody's getting a sign from the dugout, right? And, and how do you think that's changed the game? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Uh, I think there's a lot of different philosophies. I, I think somebody like in Kendall's case, like she's a three-year starter. She is Kendall, honestly, I don't think Kendall gets enough credit. I think she's, like, one of the best catchers, like, of all time, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and a after as many games as I've watched, and I think she's a huge reason why we won this game, like, period. I think she's, like, excellent framer. Anyways, long story short. Um, <laughs> but I think when you have a, a catcher that has the capability and you give them accountability to control their game, uh, I think it gives you such a, a greater sense of your purpose and like, okay, I have to do this because this is on me and I can't blame the coach. I can't point fingers. I can't say, well, no, it's your fault because you called this pitch and it got hit. I think that it, it leads to a lack of accountability. And that's where you see like true growth amongst players is when they get to decide to do things themselves. Um, I mean, even like I think about myself and like Murph, when I got on campus, he was like, you can do whatever you want. You can bunt, slap, hit whenever you want. And I was like, cool. But I had the I had to like own up to everything that I did because it was all my decision, um, and I think that again can be um, harder for kids now and harder for young players is understanding like self accountability. So I like to see it more because I think it creates such a better product. And one of my favorite things about Murph, he was like, "Practice is my time, games your time." Mm -hmm. So uh, allowing players to really own their performances on the field. That's so cool that you said that, bro. And I think that makes total sense. Um, because it's like pushing you, like you said, outside of your comfort zone. And if you see some of the videos from, you know, everybody hanging out before the games and then in the hotels and making the music videos, like you won't see me in that because I'm, I'm watching film. 
Um, and that's like something that I wanted to do because I wanted to beat this team and be a reason that we beat this team. So yeah, like she said, it's just like an extra responsibility. If you're going to be a catcher, you have to run extra, you have to swim extra, you have to watch film extra, um, or else you're not going to be great. This is a change up away. She sits back on it, and because it's up in the zone, she turned that one. A little bit with her legs, yeah. but her barrel stays back, she, just and she drives it to right field. Like, so, we can do the same thing about slapping as well. I mean, the slap, the, the game has changed a little bit in, in the same aspect of where any part of your foot's out of the box, you're out. Where, like, when you and I play, like, you pretty much could be in the pitching circle if you wanted to be. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't that big of an issue, but... In regards to Caleb, you could talk about slapping. Like, what what do you what have you notice the change from from 2012 to now in regards to the short game or slapping game? Yeah, well, I'm super passionate about slapping because I don't think I, I mean I'm not an all American if I don't slap and bunt, and I think it gives the opportunity for young players that have a different skill set that maybe don't have like the bent, most strength in the world, but they're really fast with good hand eye coordination. They can thrive in our game. I think that allows young people to be great at different aspects of our sport. But I also think it does something really, really, really powerful, and it separates us from baseball. And I don't want that to change. I want us to be unique. I want the game to be fast. I want the defense to feel like a ton of pressure because, again, that's what sets us apart. It, mm -hmm. it gives us distance to thrive on our own. Um, and so when I think about, like, the new slap rule and the new um, – the different parameters that the girls are going to have to use their footwork in. The good news is, is I think that after last year, I think they're starting to adapt. Like you're seeing that called less and less and less and all these new slight, they have to change. So they're adapting. I, I think that's been consistent. The first year that the slap rule was in effect, tons and tons and tons of out of the box calls way, way less in year two. Um, so I think that's good. I think they're going to adapt. I, I hope it doesn't, um, keep people away from slapping. Like I hope people don't turn on the TV and say, well, that sucks. Cause that girl's getting called out every single time she's stepping out of the box. So I'm not going to let my daughter slap, even though that's where she would find her niche in our game. So I hope that doesn't um, affect it. But again, I, I think it's powerful. I think that you see, um, that the girls that do it really well, the young slappers or the slappers in college that do it really, really well, they are game changers. Because again, once you start putting speed on the base pass, you're challenging the defense and the pitchers in a completely different way. All of a sudden, Kendall, if she's behind the plate and she's somebody's got, she starts somebody's fast on first base, she has to think about something else. Um, she has to think about protecting on the steal. So I think it's great for our sport and I hope kids keep slapping because it is powerful in a, in a unique way. Amen to that. I mean, and that triple threat aspect that you had, bro, was like incredible. And that's whenever we knew bro was starting off the game. It's like, okay, we would scream, you know, break up the no no, bro, because we know that she was going to slap, she was going to bunt, she was going to hit, and she was going to get a face. And she had three options to do it. It was like incredible to watch her hit. So I don't, I definitely don't want it to change either. I wish, and I was coaching that first year, and I hated that role because. You know, I, I wanted our girls to have success, and I think it was just a bit much to say your toes out of the box, uh, you know, get back here, whatever the case may be, or that she was out. So I think it was crazy to me. It's a hard call. It's the home plate umpire's call, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to change that. It's going to um, – uh, on some of the major tournaments, and I know in, like, the SEC and, like, other Power Fives, they're going to go to a four-man crew, and it's going to fall on the, the catcher – or the umpire behind second base, not the umpire behind the plate. Are they going to change it so it's not an out, but instead of ball? Mm -hmm. right? Which would be a good option because, again. I wish they would do that. Yeah. It's, it's well, similar to, like, a, a, an illegal pitch now. It should yeah. be, I think. Yeah. I mean, the other rule that changed was this September was the off-the-mound rule of pitchers. So, um, start with your foot. And everyone was worried that that was going to have a huge impact. And I don't think it was as – it didn't have as big of an impact as we all thought it would. Because mm -hmm. it was, like, I didn't really notice much, but now the pitcher can start with one foot on the mound. Just has to be within the back fast. I think it actually helped. That's so funny because that's such a huge role. Say that again. That was such a huge role for us um, that it's so funny that it comes full circle and it's like, oh, by the way, that's fine now. <laughs> and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Because it's different. Because in an international, yeah. you can come, you can grow up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can come off the mound. Your front foot can come off the mound. So it's a little bit, it's different to see. And even watching the men's game, men's fast pitch. Well, I was gonna say, 
It's crazy. Think they, they can crow hop. Yeah. That's dangerous. <laughs> they can, they, they're literally like halfway there when they jump through there. Yeah. So bottom of six, up five, three. At this point, talk to me about kind of what you're feeling. Like, okay, the rain stopped. Like, we're, we're, we've got this. Um, we've got to get, what, three more outs? The top of the seventh year? Yeah, and we had the, the top of the lineup was coming up. It was like 9-1-2. Mm -hmm. well, we this, this sounds terrible because, again, they had just talked about our history of getting locked off on all the time. One of my first thoughts was, thank God we're the home team because no matter what, we're going to have a chance to score. Like, thank God we cannot get locked off on today. <laughs> I was like, thank God. <laughs> uh, two things. We got to wear white under the yeah. lights. Yeah, and we got to uh, we got to be the home team, bro. I thought the same exact thing. I said, if if we lose, it won't be on a walk off. Yeah, like we're gonna have it in our own hands to win or lose this yep. game. Really yeah, cool. I remember going out to Jackie yard before that inning started, and that's not something I typically did. And I remember saying, like, hey, Jackie, no matter what happens, like, I'm super, super happy that we're here. Because so many other times I had felt so much pressure in that situation because I knew what had happened to us in the past, that that inning was the inning to take it away from us. Um, so I felt like it was important for me to say that. And it was like, it just felt so different this time with her and just knowing that, you know, that couldn't happen to us again. I, I totally agree with you, Kendall. It's so funny. No, it's so funny that you say that, Kendall. Like, because again, it's in the back of your mind. When something happens consistently to you in sport, you remember it. And it's like, again, it's gnawing back there. Like, again, it's some of like my freshman and sophomore year. It was constant that we were getting walked off on to some degree or giving up a big home run or walking a batter to get to a home run, whatever it may be. Like, there was just times where you felt that pressure. And I, I didn't feel it with Jackie. Like, I didn't at all feel it with Jackie. And I think that's something really cool. And something else I always say, and like Kendall, when you were talking about going out to Jackie and saying, I'm so glad I'm with you. Like, I thought the exact same thing when we were in the rain delay and we were in the huddle on the field. I like remember looking over to the Oklahoma dugout and we were losing at the time. And I was like, you know what, win or lose, I'm happy I'm here and not there, no matter mm -hmm. what. It like winning or losing, I'd rather be with this team right now and enjoying this experience than like being sad in the dugout. Yeah, and that, oh, sorry, Cassie, to cut you off, but, like, that feeling, like, sticks with you forever, even when I watch, like, a national championship happen now, and I see the team that has lost, I don't feel so great for the team that's winning, I'm like, dude, I know what that feels like to get beat out of it, and that's, like, the worst feeling ever, so, it's, like, it, like, sticks with you forever, it's, like, haunting. <laughs> Cassie? I was, I, I had actually was just agreeing with Kayla that it was, <laughs> I was saying amen to, to that feeling. Um, and, and to, to talk to, to what we were trying to do in, in hindsight, we were trying to be the first team to win it from the SEC. You know, Murphy says, he said he thought he was going to end up like the Arizona coach from baseball who had went year after year after year and never won it. So yes, there's like a certain degree we would get comfortable, but like eight times and he saw it, hadn't won it. I think that was potentially wearing on him and, um, so just like all like full circle to the fact that we weren't paying attention to any of that other stuff. And bro, I think even after we won it, we looked at each other and we we're like, I don't think we played our best game yet because all we tried to do is just beat our best game. Like that was it. We were just trying to do that. Even, even if we beat a team 14 to three or 11 to three, we were like, well, shoot, that should have been 14 to one. Like we not, we weren't happy because we won. We were trying to beat our best. And I think that was such a big difference. We, we played a nameless, faceless opponent. I just, I really do think it would not matter who we were playing against. We just cared about us. Mm -hmm. And that's special to be on it. Like when you, Kayla, when you said, you know, we were down by three runs and I looked in our dugout and looked in, in their dugout and, and I knew that I, I wanted to be here. Like I was happy I was here. That, I mean, that's, that's so special. I mean, a part of a team like that and, and knowing and believing and what does this mean? Down? Balls down? Yeah, probably. There's a change up. I don't know. <laughs> Calm down. Ball Bama, down. Bama, down. See it low? It was low. Bama beats? Is she doing the Bama beats on second? Yeah, <laughs> low, girl. Dance on second. <laughs> I was like, I watched that early night. I'm like, oh, I'm going to ask them what she's doing. Maybe it's the balls going down. <laughs> um, so, so we're getting into the seventh. Got to get three outs. So you feel it. You're having those feelings like not again, not again. And it's what, 912? Yeah. No, it's one, no, it's uh, top. Is it top? 
Oh, yeah. yeah. They switched her in during in the uh, this game. To Cassie, I thought you took her out the second. I think Chamberlain batted second, Kalani batted third. I thought yeah, they switched it. it was Destiny, Chamberlain, Kalani, and then their uh, what's her name was the sorry, sorry, she was the nine hole slapper. I think no, in the final game, they they put her in the one spot. All right, hmm. so it was one, two, three. Then <laughs> it was one, two, three. There we go. You guys can, I, it says here on this box score. I, you're right, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you guys played in it. So this is the well, top that's, lineup. That's, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I have the, uh, I have the national championship lineup right here, actually. Perfect. <laughs> of course she does. This is not a surprise. She's like, no, it's in my brain. Let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah, well, I thought I thought it was I thought it was one two three, and then I thought I got corrected in the beginning of the game. So that's the only reason why I thought nine one two. Hey, I'll take it. We just we did not want Kalani to come up. That was that was all we cared about. <laughs> that was all we cared about. Spoiler: She does. Yeah. She does. <laughs> like looking at Murphy's face right there, I'm like, I wonder if he's thinking those same things. Like, oh, is this gonna happen again? Like the the, pan, the camera pans to him. It's like, <gasps> his nails are like, probably gone. <laughs> This is like another like weird, you know, like your mental like so in this inning when Lauren Chamberlain hits her home run and she hits a solo shot and there's nobody on base. I'm like, whew, thank yeah. God. <laughs> like I didn't want them to like have an opportunity to like I know like I didn't want there to be two on and like a two run bomb or three on. Like I was just like, it's fine, she's out of the way. Now she's over with it. I don't have to deal with her anymore. We and do you know, we Jackie did a great job against lefties all year, and I thought we defended the slap really, really well all year long. So I was actually very happy that we had those two lefties. I thought that was that was a yeah. big time for us. The drop in gets them every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's filthy. And Conley's at third, correct? And Hunt's yep. at short. So they are they um, in like slap D right now? I mean, I can't see from the camera view, but do you usually they're in a bit. Yeah. He looks like he's nervous over there. <laughs> yeah. He's always just a little. He's always a little jittery. You can see Hunt wasn't too far in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I haven't been nervous all game except for right now. Or she was fast, that. right? Did you guys see how fast she was? Seriously. Yeah. She can move. That's Kayla Hunt's dad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Whistling. This is crazy too. This chills. Yeah, it is cool. I, you know, someone asked. Um, I was telling my coworker today about this, and he was like, "How long do you think before you don't have those feelings again?" And I, I do remember the first time watching this post. Like, I thought I was gonna throw up. I couldn't believe how good Oklahoma was. It was, you know, what I mean. So I certainly don't feel all of that. <laughs> but I just, I don't know how. I mean. You, you can forget about physical feelings, but you don't, I don't think you ever forget about this type of feeling. Oh, there it is, Cassie. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Tell her the story, Cassie. This Come is on, Cassie. This is a great story. Tell it, Cassie. This is a good story. <laughs> uh, okay, so my freshman year in college, I'm, we're playing Mississippi State, and that same exact play happens, and I kind of dance around the runner because I didn't know what to do. I go to try to field the ball. She's safe by a mile. Murphy chews me up one side, down the other, and then the very next practice – he has the managers, he, I go off to the side and he has the managers hit off a tee and I have to practice running into them over and over again. So much so I had this like bruise on my shoulder from practicing. So that play did not happen again in my entire career until that moment. Um, and I she just kind of caught me by surprise that she was trying to get in. Like I knew I had to make contact with her, but she, I didn't realize she was going to try to cut in towards the field. And I definitely made more, I didn't mean to make that much contact. I just knew I had you to. boxed her out. <laughs> When I watched it again, I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's my favorite play of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Not because Cassie heard her, but because of the backstory. Yeah, no, it, and it's like those little plays, those ones, the weird things that you practice and practice, you're like, when are we ever going to use this? Well, so Murphy, uh, he got me a picture of that play framed. And it's, it's from the weirdest angle. It's like from the Oklahoma dugout, it almost looks like. So you just see the girl with her legs in the air and me fielding it. Because I had to get it before one foul. That was like, I think there was like a rush that I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we have to get this done in time. <laughs> That's my favorite Cassie story. <laughs> Oops. Well, if we thought we were going to win the national championship on that out. <laughs> that <in there. laughs> A lot of the seven, two outs. She's incredible. 
I, like again it goes back to like it's harder to hit two home runs in a row than it is to hit one with a runner on first so I'm glad we didn't walk her I'm glad like yeah you know what I mean like it's better yep golly that's that one hang on Kendall, do you remember what Jackie said after this? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, we won't say it, but she just, she, in true Jackie fashion, she did something to make us laugh. Oh, and yeah, I can imagine was, what she said. <laughs> that was perfect because that was, it was like, it very easily could have gone both ways, right? You're at, like, well. we could have, like, <laughs> and so she says something instead where we're, we're like, oh my gosh, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't have to worry about you. <laughs> but she was like, well. <laughs> Here it goes, you guys. Yeah. First pounding. I know. My, like, Same. that frame drop. <sighs> Easy. <laughs> He's giving up that home run to our Kaylani, what, in the first or second? Very first. Uh, first. It, her first at bat, right? First at bat. First inning. I was so convinced she was going to hit a ground ball. Oh, I thought bat. Cassie was going to catch it. Oh, that was it. I was like, this is how the game's going to end. Oh boy. Chills. And gosh, the frame job on this. It's so good. Oh my Kendall. Kendall, man. If so, it wasn't good. so good. <laughs> Had to lean with it, rock with it over there. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Oh my. Oh! It's the most unexpected way to win a national championship. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I was like, throw it right. To I was like, throw it right at her because normally we had gone like way outside on O2. Boom. Gosh. Perfect pitch. I mean, so, at least a ground ball or a pop-up, you would have, like, been able to brace yourself even for half a second. You have no time to brace yourself on a called strike three. No. Mm -mm. So this right here, Tara, I'm at the point I could not breathe. <laughs> it's like, help me. You're at the bottom of the pile. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like this. My arms were out like this, and everybody's on top of me. It was the best feeling. I think I was the last one in the pile because I, like, froze out in left field. Cassie's, like, talking about, like, how do you react? I, like, what do I do? Yeah. Do I, you know, <laughs> and then you're like, oh. I don't so, remember that at all. Like, I, I don't remember getting thought, Do you remember us talking like we would be on bus rides and be like, man, what would it be like if we won it? And we were like, do we take our cleats off so we don't spike people? <laughs> we were like genuinely concerned, like, how is a dog pile going to work where like no one gets a cleat to the face? And so as I'm running, I'm like, well, I guess we're not taking our cleats off. <laughs> <laughs> going right of course, Cassie would be like, should we fold our shirts and also put our jerseys then so we don't ruin those so <laughs> lean them all i'm like i can't breathe <laughs> best best question on the or best answer i should say is from jackie right here oh yeah i wish you could hear i can't hear it too well yeah i gotta dig deep dig real deep dig really deep <laughs> she like doesn't even know what's going on it's yeah. so great gosh yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, uh, I think I started crying and I don't think I stopped for like a week. I, but in all seriousness, I don't think I stopped till we got to IHOP later. I, I, I could not stop boohooing. Yeah, so we went to 4 a.m. IHOP just as an after story. <laughs> Nowhere else was open. We hadn't eaten since like 11.30. <laughs> you had a pretzel apparently that you didn't I check. Did. <laughs> no one else was eating. <laughs> no. so your families, were your families all there? Like, did yeah, you they came. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think everybody had somebody there, which I think was really, really special being that people are, you know, it's hard to buy a ticket to the, to Oklahoma, you know, like your team could be out the next day, you know, yeah. so. My sister, unfortunately, had to go home. She was working as a teacher and they were like, you can't miss this day. So she didn't make oh, it. But yeah. my family actually showed up to IHOP and then drove 17 hours back to Florida that night. And they're like, we were just so excited. <laughs> Couldn't um, sleep anyways. <laughs> my uncle worked at the Empire State Building, and he was on his way into work that morning, and my aunt called him and said, go to LaGuardia, I just booked you a flight, and he flew. He showed up with, like, his Italian little hat and a white t-shirt, a leather jacket, and pants in the middle of June in Oklahoma. He's like, I'm dying. I need, I need a t-shirt. <laughs> so, but the game almost got canceled. He was freaking out because he had a, a flight the next day, which I'm sure a lot of people were, but yeah, yeah. I think everyone's got, you know, your bro, your now husband boyfriend at the time mm -hmm. pitched his flight back to Oregon and stayed it's just so neat yeah. to hear stories like that so he stayed yeah oh yeah he definitely stayed yeah and my whole family like um I had uh, my siblings I have three siblings my cousin who I was talking about uh, my aunt and uncle my other uncle my like distant aunt and uncle from Illinois came like I had family friends there like I had a, like probably 20 people 
there and um they all wore shirts with my name on the back and my sister and my cousin were walking around and people were asking for their autographs because they were my <laughs> sister and cousin and they were like are you Caleb Rose family will you take a picture <laughs> like it's so tough. but I mean that's, that's the autograph. magic of that's the magic of the world series like you're so famous for a little bit and it's amazing it's like uh, it's like awesome. a rock star for a week that's yeah. great that you had all that support okay so Last thing, we're going to close it out. Um, if you could give advice to your younger self. Um, so we're saying like, <clears throat> if you look back, we would just watched you all win the first SEC championship, national championship. Um, and we're what, eight years down the line now? Eight years? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to your younger self? Or what would you say to the current players that are, embarking on their next season the 2021 season because our last season was cut short what would you say to them what would that your advice be um to them and we'll start with you cassie yeah i i tried so hard to appreciate everything um i just remember even looking at how uh perfect green grass and brown dirt look together and i, I try to appreciate so badly the just every moment um and I try to write a lot down and I just, I, I still look back and think, gosh, I got to have a catch with one of my best friends every day. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. I just think that they're there. I just want to, I, I would just want to sit back and not sweat some of the small stuff I was might've been stressing about and just realize like how unbelievably impactful that was for me and lifetime wise. And then how, uh, how special the people were. I mean, I think we knew it to some degree, but just to, hey, take more moments to not just appreciate the apparel you get or the cool stadiums or the games, like, I don't know, just appreciate the fact that you get to hug someone, you get to, you know what I mean? And that's, that's big for me to say, cause you know, I'm not a hugger, but just, some, you know, I, I see you guys once a year at best. And you know, that's, gosh, we got, we saw, we saw each other every day, you know? Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah. More hugs. Hopefully we can all have more hugs, not less social distance yes. soon. Um, Kayla, how about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to a piece of advice I, advice I got um, as a freshman, and it was from Murphy, actually. And uh, it was about, like, right before we were about to play Florida, which is a big deal. And, you know, like, that's a huge rivalry. And I swear, like, he was kind of, like, talking to everybody, but he, like, looked into my soul, I felt like. Um, <laughs> and he said, don't wait. Like, don't wait to be great. And I was a freshman at the time and I was like, wow, like time goes by too fast. Like softball, your career, it ends too quickly. And I think we all wait for an opportunity or we wait for something to happen or we wait for our, uh, us to get older so we're more mature, but don't wait, your, your time is so fleeting. So don't wait to work hard. Don't wait to have fun. Don't wait to go and take a risk, take a chance and be fearless as you play. Cause I, I think that's, um, something that's really important as a former player now and that doesn't get to go out and play every day great thanks Kayla and Kendall how about you um I think I would build off of what Cassie and Bro both said I mean the things you'll remember the most are those times with your teammates and I would go back and, and if I could give myself some advice it'd be like just to be the best teammate you could be because there's not one person who doesn't light up as soon as Kayla or Cassie walk into a room and just to have that feeling must be totally incredible. So um, building those I relationships, we all light up when you walk. <laughs> putting those relationships first um, are, is like the number one thing for me because the, the, these people are going to be your family and you want to make an impact in a positive way. Um, and I, I wish I could have gone back and told myself that. And then also, I think to build off Kayla's point, like I was putting so much pressure on myself um, as a hitter specifically early on in my career. Um, I didn't get to hit that much my freshman year, so I didn't play that much my freshman year, obviously. But um, and then moving forward, I had just put so much pressure around the fact that I wanted to be like one of the first really great hitting catchers at Alabama. And it never happened to work out for me until it kind of all clicked for me at the end. And I wish I would have had more time in that, that realm of thinking you know what, I'm going to go out there and just, you know, be better than the person throwing against me and stop worrying about so much about what other people think about how I play. Um, and I think that would have totally changed my pers uh, perspective as a young player. Well, thank you, Kendall. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you, Kayla. Bro. Thank you, bro. I can call you bro now. I feel you like. You bro, yeah. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> and um, oh, such a joy. I loved watching this game it's epic 
Um, there's so many different aspects to it, but most of all, um, I just had such a wonderful time chatting with you all. Um, and like, there's a part of me that wishes like we could all just go out and, and just like go play right now, like go play catch. That would be adult league. <laughs> I mean, we could start a league. But um, thank you again. Congratulations on your national championship to twenty. 2012. I'm like, what, what year are we in? <laughs> um, and thank you for being a part of the D1 Softball NCAA Roundtable Women's College World Series Edition. Um, and roll tide. Roll, roll tide. Yeah, thank roll you tide. So much. Thanks, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs>